so we want to talk about the automatic flight control sub-modes, or the automatic flight control system sub-modes. These are uh, systems that are in place that protect the aircraft under certain circumstances. Great marketing ideas if you were to try to sell an air airplane and you said, this airplane has these six things that will save it. Good morning, departure Vinjet 379, Julia Mike 1.5 for 3000 and the turn to 090. 379 on Julia Mike, turn right heading 140. Right turn 140, 9 Julia Mike. 379 on Julia Mike, turn right heading 180. Right turn 180, 9 Julia Mike. Let's take off runway 19, 379 Julia Mike. Hey there, everybody, welcome back. Uh, been underway for about uh, one hour and seven minutes now. We've got uh, 590 nautical miles remaining for uh, our arrival into Nashville today. Hour and 58 minutes. Fuel over destination still showing 77 gallons. So, uh, fuel over destination. IFR minimums, usually about 55 gallons or so in the Vision Jet. Um, so, 77 is looking good. True airspeed is 316, ground speed 298. And uh, just start picking up a little bit of light chop, but it's uh, not too bad. We'll just hang in there for a bit. So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what's called the automated flight control sub modes of the SF-50. These are um, automated systems within the avionics or the airframe itself that... Uh, operate whether or not there's pilot input or guidance per se. Four flight five eighty five the York one three three point four seven. Thirty three forty seven four flight five eighty five. Have a great one. You too. Out to three seventeen. I uh, got light chop delta three seventeen. Seven forty nine twenty two. Looks like it doesn't improve completely. Light chop reported ahead of thirty four and a seven five. That was a good thing. Blue Street 5655, maintain 12 2, actually, you want 28 or 33, final? 28, Blue Street 6655. Blue Street 5655, maintain 5 2, 8, 0. 7, 8, 2, 8, 0, Blue Street 6, 6, 5. New York Center, 4555, flight level 300, pretty smooth here. 4555, thank you. New York Center, good. All right, yeah, so we want to talk about the automatic flight control sub modes. Or the automatic flight control system sub modes. These are uh, systems that are in place that uh, protect the aircraft under certain circumstances. Uh, there are six primary sub-modes, and then there's some uh, sub-modes within the sub-modes. But essentially, these are all great marketing ideas if you were to try to sell an air airplane and you said, this airplane has these six things that will save it um, if the pilot happens to um, put himself in a disadvantaged situation. So, first is going to be the CAPS sub mode, the Cirrus airframe parachute okay, system. And it's not that the parachute will automatically deploy because the parachute will never deploy on its own. It will only deploy if the CAPS handle, which is in the emergency panel between the two front seats, is pulled down, straight down, 45 pounds of pressure with both hands. And uh, that will, that will de eventually deploy the parachute but the uh, avionics piece of this thing is what is within the automatic flight control system so if i was to pull the caps handle down but the aircraft's now chugging along at an indicated airspeed of 295 knots the automated flight control uh, sub mode for, uh, for caps will basically say that airspeed is too fast to deploy the parachute we need to do something immediately to um uh, slow this airplane down, right? Request. So what's going to happen is, as soon as the aircraft senses that the cap handle has been pulled, uh, it's going to automatically go uh, thrust level lever to idle to slow the plane down, and it's going to pitch the aircraft up automatically. Now, this is going to be done without any pilot input, and uh, say, uh, in, in, in case the pilot is incapacitated, uh, one of the passengers in the back gets up and pulls the caps handle, but they're not seat belted. That could be uh, pretty dangerous for them because the aircraft's going to immediately go to thrust to idle and pitch up in an attempt to get to the caps deployment 
speed envelope. And that envelope is actually only 135 knots of indicated airspeed or 145 knots of true airspeed. Essentially, we would have to lose uh, well, it counts about 60 knots, right, uh, in order to uh, deploy the, for the parachute to jettison out of the aircraft. So what's going to happen is pull the caps handle, it's going to wait up to 30 seconds, going to evaluate what's going on, and then it will jettison the parachute, right? But during that 30 seconds, it's going to attempt to automatically slow the plane down. And that is the CAPS sub mode. Get thrust lever to idle, pitch the aircraft up, the steep nose up attitude to slow it down prior to the parachute being uh, deployed, right? Now, what's going to happen if the aircraft's out of control, like in a spin and increasing airspeed? The CAPS system also knows that the aircraft is speeding up, not slowing down. In that case, it will immediately jettison the parachute. It may not work because you'll be above the uh, CAPS uh, deployment uh, airspeed envelope, but um, again, the CAPS deployment envelope is just demonstrated airspeeds, not the maximum airspeed that the, air, the aircraft uh, parachute recovery system can handle. The next sub mode is going to be the safe return sub mode. And uh, in the Generation 2 jets, and some of the Generation, I'm sorry, in the Generation 2 Plus jets, and some of the Generation 2 jets, they have the automatic safe return feature. What does that do? That is an auto land system that, as a result of pilot incapacitation, can result in the aircraft automatically landing. Um, at an air airport that's suitable for the landing, it will. Uh, the aircraft will do its best to avoid weather and uh, pick a suitable landing location at an airport uh, for safe return. So uh, now there are some requirements. First of all, wind conditions have to be favorable, favorable for a landing, and there also has to be an RNAV approach for that airport. Uh, but that being said, if the safe return, auto return sub mode is activated by a passenger in the plane, the aircraft will find a suitable landing site. It will begin to squawk 7700, which is the emergency squawk code, and um, there will be some automatic electronic transmissions to ATC along the way, and the aircraft will eventually come to a landing, or come to a, a um, I should say, approach landing come to a stop on the runway, and uh, that's how the auto land feature will work. Now, there, there's three ways that safe return sub mode can be triggered, of course, and that's the first is obviously the red button in the back's pressed by a passenger deliberately. Second way is if um, the aircraft has entered auto level mode and have been in auto level mode uh, for over a minute, the it will assume that the uh, aircraft is in a distressed state or the pilot's in a distressed state and it will activate no, auto land. 43, 42, and then the third way is of course is if the emergency descent mode gets activated because cabin pressure or cabin altitude reaches a point where the cabin altitude is 14,900 it's going to automatically go into the emergency descent mode uh, because it's going to assume that the pilot is incapacitated at that point due to hypoxia. It's going to go into emergency descent mode. As the aircraft passes through 15,000 feet, the safe return sub mode is going to be activated, and eventually the aircraft is going to level off at uh, 14,000 feet, and it will begin to navigate its way to a selected and suitable airport for landing um, automatically. So that's how that goes. That's the safe return sub mode. That's how it's keyed. This video is sponsored in part by SF50 Flight Support. Check out sf50flightsupport.com for more information. We make jet ownership better with comprehensive services for owners, pilots, and operators of SF50 Vision Jets. Activated. I talked briefly about another sub mode known as the emergency descent mode. Again, uh, based on high cabin altitude, uh, normally the cabin altitude is no greater than 8,000 Beat cabin altitude in this plane, if it was to reach 14,900, the aircraft would automatically enter emergency descent mode. That is another sub mode that will attempt to bring the aircraft down to a lower altitude and uh, and level off at 14,000 feet. 
And at that altitude, hopefully the pilot will uh, uh, exit the hypoxic state they may have entered and uh, be able to gain aircraft control at that point. Otherwise, safe return is going to kick in and bring this aircraft to the ground at an airport suitable for landing. Next uh, automatic flight control system sub-mode is going to be the enhanced stability protection. Now, what does that do? Okay, that is an automated system that works whether the autopilot's on or not. Uh, actually, it in this case, the autopilot would be off, and the pilot would be flying around on their own. And now, maybe they've repeatedly attempted to uh, bank the aircraft more than 45 degrees in one direction. When the aircraft is banked more than 45 degrees in one direction or the other, the enhanced stability protection will automatically kick the autopilot in, and it will put some forces basically to counteract that, that um, rolling tendency and bring it back in to uh, uh, a flight attitude of less than 45 degree banks, right? So you don't want to really be banking more than 45 degrees unless you're doing like steep turns during a check ride or something like that. If you are, the aircraft will attempt to save itself and tell you, hey sir, we do not want you to be banking more than 45 degrees and they're going to, the, basically the stick's going to nudge itself back with pressure uh, as a reminder to bring the aircraft to uh, less of a, a banking attitude, okay? So 45 degrees is the uh, where that's triggered, and uh, so 45 degree bank is pretty significant, um, and going beyond that would be excessive. So that's why that's where that's triggered. And then the next automated flight control system sub mode we have is basically known as uh, it's a bucket of protective features, but it's known as stall protection, right? So within stall protection. The aircraft's going to want to save itself if the pilot enters uh, into a stall condition. In other words, uh, they've exceeded the critical angle of attack, or basically the aircraft's gone to such a slow airspeed that uh, it's going to uh, have an uh, impending stall. Or in other words, not that the engine's going to stall. We're not referring to that. We're referring to basically the plane no longer flying because uh, it's exceeded the critical angle of attack, or it's below a flying airspeed, right? And at that point, the plane will stop flying, go into a stall. It's very dangerous, particularly if you are close to the ground. So the aircraft has a way to protect itself. 4397, 4.585, have a great day. New York Center. 4413, climb at 28 and a half at 3 seven, seven, six. You got ride reports? Uh, yes. Air 4413, 30 is uh, occasional to continuous light chop, and then 32 is worse, continuous light turbulence, occasional moderate, and then everything 34 and above is mostly smooth. We'd like to put 340 on request, Air 4413. Roger, I'll have that for you in two minutes for traffic. Washington Center, 4.585, flight level 300, just as you described, occasional light chop. 4585 Washington to Roger. If you want to change altitude, just let me know. Well, thanks. 4585. So again, we're talking about the automatic flight control uh, system sub mode of stall protection. This is going to attempt to save the aircraft if the pilot puts it into an attitude or airspeed condition that's too slow. Okay. What's going to happen, of course, is the stall protective system protection system. We'll bring up the angle of attack indicator here, and it's going to say, like, listen, you are exceeding the angle of attack. You need to do something. Um, and uh, there's also um, a mode where the stick will begin to shake. So in other words, you're about to approach the stall condition. Uh, you're not quite there, but you're about to get there, and the aircraft's recognized it. It's going to start shaking the stick here, the flight control stick. And uh, that yeah, stick shaker is supposed to be a reminder that um, you have really allowed the aircraft to either exceed the critical angle of attack or gone, get, got too slow. And at that point, the stick shaker will remind you to do something about it. In the case that the recovery is, um, obviously, if, if you're an autopilot, kick the autopilot off. And, uh, of course, you're going to immediately pitch the aircraft down to reduce the angle of attack 
and then thrust is going to go to the takeoff position or full forward. That's the recovery from a stall. Pretty much all the stalls are pretty much the same way, except for if you're not in a level condition. If you're not in a level condition, you probably want to work on leveling the wings. Now, if you've gone past the stick shaker feature of the aircraft and you are still entering, you're about to enter the stall and maybe you have physically entered the stall, the stick pusher will basically apply about 80 pounds of pressure forward on the side stick automatically and uh, pitch the aircraft down in an attempt to gain airspeed since you're so close to the stall. And there's no really, there's no way to really fight the stick pusher because it's so strong. But you just want to have a firm grip on it, maintain aircraft control, and uh, basically, again, reduce the angle of attack and thrust to takeoff position. Other situation that's related to stall protection is overspeed protection. You do not have to be in autopilot mode, uh, just flying along and. Uh, Say for instance, you're in a descent, and uh, you've exceeded 250 knots of indicated airspeed. The aircraft's going to say you've exceeded max speed here, and it's going to pitch up on its own so that uh, the aircraft will slow down. And for the underspeed protection to automatically pitch the aircraft down, you do have to be in autopilot mode. Uh, there is a condition where if it's altitude critical, in other words, you're close to the ground, the aircraft will not pitch itself down to the ground, attempt to save it. But you'll still get the warnings that you're entering stall. Then the final automatic flight control system sub mode is going to be the auto level button. I already described when this happens. Basically, it's when Number the emergency one, descent mode... November, clear Emergency descent mode has been activated due to a high cabin altitude. The plane will descend and go into auto level mode at 14,000 feet. So those are the automated flight control system sub modes for the SF-50 Vision Jet. Like I said, if you were to list them on a marketing sheet or something, I think they'd do a pretty good job of selling the aircraft. But uh, in any case, they are meant to um, sort of monitor the situation and take action if, uh, if able and uh, save the aircraft. So any of these things... Um, can affect the pilot's situational awareness and everything else. So, you know, we definitely want to avoid entering any of these conditions that would eventually allow us to enter um, the position where any of these sub-modes need to be activated. So, in any case, uh, those are the automated flight control sub-modes for the SF-50 Vision Jet. And I think they do a pretty good job of protecting the aircraft and it's Watch occupants and, uh, good in flight. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell so you'll be the first to be notified when new video content is posted. And I can't thank you enough for your questions, comments, and feedback. Until next time, safe flying, and we'll see you on the next flight.